Hello everyone, so this is my first video that I've done for ages uh, and uh, it's a bit of a shame because I got into the swing of it and had a few videos I had lined up I wanted to do but uh, I've been in the hospital with Covid so uh, there's been a bit of a gap uh, and after this gap um, I wanted to do, there's a few I had lined up like I am going to do one on I Am Legend and I'm going to do a video uh, possibly on The Martian as well um, and I do definitely want to do one I've been planning and trying to work out how to do it on short stories so that's in the planning but because of this gap I thought well I won't do one on one book um, I'll do something a bit different uh, to hopefully uh, make it more interesting for the first one for quite a while so this is a video of 50 science fiction books that I love so they are all recommended books because I love them um, they're different, so you know there's some serious some, some there's some serious books in there, and there's some uh, funny books in there as well. Um, but all books I recommend, I, I love them to death. And some of them are from my past, and some of them are kind of books that got me into reading, and some of them are more recent reads. So 50 books, 50 fiction books, science fiction. Uh, I've stuck to those. Well, I say science fiction. Uh, I've kind of just used it as a science fiction fantasy horror thing. Uh, so 50 fiction books that I love that I'd recommend. And I'm going to rattle through them and not say too much about them. Otherwise, it'll be an enormously long video. But I'm going to just take uh, each one and just say something about each one. I'm going to do them in alphabetical order. So if I do it in alphabetical order, then you won't get the same author come up. Uh, but on that note, a few statistics. So... I wrote a few things down um, just about the authors that have come up. So uh, there's a list here of the authors that have come up more than once. So these these authors have had two entries in the list. Uh, so Robert Sheckley, Harlan Nellison, Blake Crouch, John Scalzi, Terry Pratchett, Alfred Bester, Claire North... And depending on if you like how I put the Tolkien books in there, there's either two books or four books, depending on your interpretation of it, from Tolkien as well. Uh, so most of those are two, but then there's two authors that have got more than two. I didn't want to put tons and tons by the same author, uh, but Ursula Le Guin has got three books in the list, because she was a genius. And um, really mostly because he was so prolific and he's written so much, uh, I say is, yeah, I just said was, is so prolific. Stephen King's got four books in the list, um, so I uh, couldn't really take one out. Um, so, so I've chosen four books out of the books I've read by Stephen King to be in the list. So there are lots and lots of uh, one-off books, you know, one book by a particular author where the book is just phenomenal. And actually, um, for the case of somebody like John Wyndham, I've only read one of his books and it blew me away and I want to read the rest of them. And I've actually got almost all of the rest of his books so I will be reading those shortly um, but yeah there's only one book from him in there because I've only read one so uh, that's the plan 50 fiction uh, books science fiction fantasy horror um, that I love that I'd recommend go I have a really bad feeling about this okay so uh, first off is the first Robert Sheckley book uh, yeah, Chemical Marriage of Alistair Compton. It's very funny. It's very typically uh, off the wall, surrealist, whatever. Um, it's about a man who's schizophrenic. And uh, in, the, in these times, in this particular world, uh, your personality can be split into different bodies. And he realises early on in the book that something's not right. He needs to find his, his other personalities and reconnect. Uh, so, uh, and, the, and he looks for them. And they're not happy about the idea. They don't want to do that. So uh, it's, it's a very funny book. It's very cool. Robert Sheckley, very typical of him. So that's number one. Next one's a classic. So Alice in Wonderland. I couldn't do um, a book. I mean, obviously, this is under the fantasy uh, genre. Um, I couldn't do a, a list like this without Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Uh, so there we go. Um, that's one of the copies I've got. I've got a few copies. I bought a new one recently, a really nice one from the Alice in Wonderland shop um, in Oxford. But anyway, this is one of the copies I've got. I've got a few. Uh, so yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Um, next up is um, the first 
of the two Harlan Ellison books. So most of his books are short story collections, same as Ray Bradbury. Um, but again, both of them have written novels as well. Uh, I mean, he's written all sorts of things. Um, and uh, he had a massive influence on me when I was a, a teenager. Um, got me reading a lot. And uh, he's, a bit, he's kind of one of my heroes, if you like. Um, as a person, he was he was very uh, aggressive and argumentative, and like, you know, got that kind of reputation. Uh, and he was kept suing everybody at left, right, and centre, uh, like James Cameron for the Terminator and all that. But um, amazing brain, amazing writer, great knowledge about science fiction. And uh, this book contains "I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream," which is one of his most famous stories, arguably his most famous story. Uh, and it's also got Repent Harlequin said to TikTok Man, which is probably my favourite story by him, which is a bit of a dystopian kind of V Vendetta type story, but written decades and decades ago. So anyway, Harlan Ellison, All the Sounds of Fear. And literally, just because of the alphabet, the next one uh, is also a Harlan Ellison book, The Beast That Shouted Love at the Heart of the World. What an amazing title. He's got great sort of way of words. Uh, and I remember one of the stories he wrote for The Twilight Zone, was called crazy as a soup sandwich which is an amazing sentence if you ask me but anyway this is another great collection and it contains uh, a boy and his dog which was made into a film with don johnson playing the young man uh, protagonist um and uh, uh that was like when he was really young before he did miami vice uh and a boy and his dog is a great story it's one of my favorites and it's just an awesome collection so uh, that's the two Hunnison stories that are back to back because it just happens that's where they sit in the alphabet. Next one, Jose Saramago. So um, he's a, a fascinating, amazing writer, and uh, blindness is a is a phenomenal um, kind of post apocalyptic story where everybody goes blind um, except for uh, there's there's one couple that aren't. Well, no, there's one man that's not. I think it's just a man because he's looking after his wife as well and all that. Uh, and it's, it's, some of it's brutal. It's bleak. It's not, it's not like... Uh, there, there are some stories that have this kind of thing and, and you know, nothing too bad happens. But this is, just, this is some, of these, some of the chapters in this are horrible because people take advantage. And, and I know there's one particular chapter that's really violent and, and uh, very it's kind of uh, tough to read. But it's, it's so powerful. It's brilliant. Uh, and, and it does make you think what you would do if you were blind and, and how much our sight is so important to us. And as a community, it completely breaks down uh, and there's lots of selfish, nasty people around. Uh, so that that thing is done really well. I mean, Saramago's writing style is very matter of fact. So you might have to get used to that. Um, I've read a few of his books now and he's an amazing writer, got a hell of a brain. But yeah, his writing style is quite, um, uh, what's the word? objective um so that might make it harder to read i don't know but yeah i definitely recommend this as a serious post-apocalyptic book blindness uh, and then you've got the classic body snatches jack finney uh so obviously everybody knows the films there's been loads of films um from this book uh but the book is amazing so and, and i'd say it's better than the films um so yeah uh, seek it out and find it clearly it's still going to get reprinted loads because it's so respected which is great uh, but yeah, if you find a copy read it because it really is a fantastic book um you probably know the plot um but it's just really well written and you know that kind of mystery in the town about what's going on and the kind of the central characters trying to figure out this sort of weird thing that's happening in their town is done so well and, and you're kind of like you know really intrigued to see how they figure it out and how that kind of pans out. Body Snatches, Jack Finney. Uh, the next one's relatively recent. I think it's the most recent one out so far. Children of Time, Adrian Tchaikovsky. I did do a special video for this one. I've read three of his books now and I've got a few others that I want to read. Uh, I think he's a fantastic writer, but this is just ridiculous. It's, it's, a, it's a huge book, um, spans thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And a whole, well, lots of different um, uh, galaxies, uh, and it's just it's, it's epic, 
and it's brilliantly written. It's 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 huge, but it's also really approachable. If you read it, um, then you get that sense that um, everything's ticking along really well, even though there's lots there's lots of science in there. He's done loads of research for this book, um, and I think it's actually more approachable than his sequel, Children of Ruin, which I think was a little bit drier. Um, but yeah, this is just, I just don't think you can fault this. I think it's just an incredible book. So Children of Time, Adrian Tchaikovsky. Uh, this is uh, Becky Chambers, so another relatively recent one. Um, this is part of her um, Wayfarers series, uh, A Closed and Common Orbit. The reason why I picked this one, I didn't want to pick, put all of them in there. Uh, partly, to be fair, the third one I do think is weaker than the other two. But I also think this is, is better than the first one. I think this is such a lovely book. Um, so um, her writing style and the way she does uh, the way she writes her books is very um, unusual uh, in that um, people sometimes criticise her for not doing conflict very well or there's not a lot of conflict in her books um, and uh, obviously that is the hallmark of a lot of fiction of most fiction that there's some kind of conflict being resolved but with her books they're massively character driven and they're hugely based on the development of those characters and their relationships uh, within the setting of, of the science fiction kind of world that she's built around them. Uh, this one is really small, it's much smaller than the other books and it's kind of only about a few characters uh, and there's two stories running through it concurrently uh, from different times and it's just really, it's just beautifully done and I got really involved with the characters in a way, in a bigger way than I did with the other books. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. And I really want to read it again soon. Uh, it's just a beautiful book. So Closed and Common Orbit, definitely my favourite out of the Way Wayfarer series. And Becky Chambers is a really interesting writer to look out for. Uh, okay, this one is crazy. Dark Matter, Blake Crouch. Uh, again, quite a recent one. Um, read it a few years ago. And uh, it just, I just couldn't wait to read every page. It's just... It's just such a brilliant book, uh, and it's thrilling. It's it's interesting. It's surprising. It's beautifully done. He's a scriptwriter as well as a novelist, so I think he's quite good at pace. And uh, yeah, I won't say what it's about because it's one of those books. The less you know, the better. But yeah, uh, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, uh, crazy. Um, okay, so I talked about blindness with the Saramago book. Uh, Day of the Triffids, John Wyndham. Uh, this is an important book, I think. Uh, it's an old classic, um, and uh, I was I read it out of curiosity, to be fair. I didn't realise it was going to be as good as it was, uh, but now I want to read everything he's done because I just love the way he writes, and it's just you know it's just a fantastic story. It's, it's a very famous story. It's been adapted into film and TV lots of times, um, but it's really written so well that I'd say you know like I'll say for a few of these books. If there is that kind of film and TV connection, definitely read it because it's just written really well and you'll love it. So, yeah, Day of the Triffids, amazing, amazing, amazing book. This is a, a book that I nearly did a special video on. Um, I really loved it when I read it. Um, it's the first uh, winner of the Hugo Award, uh, which is the major science fiction award. It was 1952, I think it was. Um, early 50s. I think it was 1952, um, and it's about telepathy, um, and uh, it's about um, it's about a man trying to murder somebody amongst a world of telepaths. So it's like, how does he do it? And he wants revenge and all this. And it's, it's just brilliant. It's really, really well done. It's really good. And it's funny because um, his other famous book is in this list as well. When I get there, I'll, I'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, Alfred Bester. I can see why he's a legend because these two sort of major works are fantastic. So yeah, Demolished Man, um, another a, a case as well where there's no likable characters in this, but you're still like really um, gripped about what's going to happen to them and whether this main character gets away with what he wants to do. So <clears throat> yeah, Demolished Man, Alfred Bester, fantastic. Okay, rattling into the D's, the Dispossessed. This is the first of the Ursula Le Guin books. Um, this is her uh, political book, if you like, is her analysis of essentially capitalism versus socialism um, within this sort of science fiction setting, uh, where there's a guy trying to 
create a new bit of technology to bridge planets together. Um, and it's really just a setup for her to discuss in the book the benefits and drawbacks of capitalism and the benefits and drawbacks of a kind of socialist utopia, which is on the other uh, moon. And uh, that's the kind of base of the book. But it's it's just absolutely amazing, brilliantly written, beautifully done, and you, it just makes you think all the way through it. You know, every paragraph it just makes you uh, think about what she's saying about morality and and purpose and society and the community and you know, all sorts of things like that. Amazing. Okay, so this is Connie Willis, uh, another uh, as you can see another sort of often reprinted book, uh, science fiction classic. The Doomsday Book, uh, massively into time travel books, and this is one of the famous ones. Um, also, um, um, I've got a very big interest in history, and this is set during the days of the Black Death. Um, and what's really interesting, because it's a big book, and she really does give a sense of what it would have been like. She's really thought about what uh, their position would have been in it in uh, the 14th century if they'd have got the Black Death and how helpless they would have been and how helpless the main character is when she goes back in time. So, yeah, Doomsday Book, fantastic. Uh, alphabetically, I just put them in here, but it's actually followed by another time travel book. Uh, so 112263 is Stephen King's big time travel book and it's easily one of my favourite Stephen King books. It's just so brilliant. Um, and... Uh, it's kind of the, the general sort of plot that it starts with. I mean, it's another big one. I think it might even be into the 700s, is it? Yeah, 700 and f 730 something pages. Um, so it's a big book. Uh, and the central premise that starts the book is a man that discovers he could possibly attempt to prevent the assassination of JFK. But then when he goes back to 1963, all sorts of other things happen uh, that complicate what he's going to do. Um, it uh, makes it changes what he wants to do. Um, and it also uh, he, he kind of forms relationships while he's there and blah, blah, blah. It's really, really good. So if you like time travel and you know Stephen King's a good writer, then definitely want to try 112263. So this is the first of the Claire North books. Uh, the first 15 lives of Harry August. Um, this gets talked about a lot. Um, I really, really like her a lot. Um, I've not read anything I didn't like by her, and I think there's only two books I haven't read by her now. Um, although she's just released another one, so that'd be three. Um, but uh, yeah, I think she's amazing. And uh, this is everybody's favourite. My, my favourite of hers is the other book I've got in this list. But this is an incredible book. Um, and it's it's an interesting one about a central conceit where somebody keeps getting reborn into the same body and they keep having the same life um, and um, they basically retain the memories of the previous lives and it kind of develops from there. Um, so I uh, couldn't recommend this book enough and actually I just think anything you find by her is worth reading. Uh, so 15, first 15 lives of Harry August. Amazing. Okay, this is a big one. Couldn't do this list without uh, what's often been called the first ever science fiction book, but it really is very, very special, and that's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you need to say about this book except the fact that uh, if you haven't read it, you should. Um, and if you think this book is all about whatever you've seen on the film, um, there's still not been a version of... Frankenstein that's like the book which is kind of crazy because there are so so many adaptations I don't know how many there are there's probably over a hundred different uh, films about Frankenstein but none of them for some reason want to do the actual book um, so it's quite bizarre totally recommend you read this and don't think it's not worth it because you've seen Kenneth Branagh's version or something uh, it's, it's just an amazing book really really philosophical more than you'd realise possibly if you hadn't read it you wouldn't know that the creature, who's called Adam in the book, thinks about the meaning of life, what um, him being given life, and what the doctor 
um, basically acting like God uh, means for him as far as his, his spirituality and, and the idea of what life's about and meaning and purpose. So, you know, you don't really see that in the films, um, which is a shame. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, this book is really, really deep and it's, it'll probably take you by surprise if you didn't know it had that kind of content in it. Uh, okay, completely different scale now. Um, but again, another classic, uh, more recent classic, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this has had such a massive impact that if anybody does a comedy in science fiction, it always says um, that it's inspired by the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It could be that that author just wanted to do a comedy, but this has got such a big, important part of our culture, so it has such a big impact on our culture, that's what happens. It's mentioned on the back of thousands of books as its influence. So, yeah, um, quite rightly, it's, it's, a, it's a beautifully written, very funny book, and it does have an important place in uh, science fiction history. Uh, another classic, um, The Hobbit. Uh, so this could be obvious, maybe, but uh, when I was going through my books and I saw it, I just thought, oh my God, I can't not include The Hobbit. Um, I read this to my son when he was little, um, but I read it when I was little, and it's just a beautiful book. It's definitely not like Lord of the Rings. So why Peter Jackson decided to make these films with the same tone as Lord of the Rings because that baffles me. But there we are. He should have made a children's film. Um, adults would have loved it as well. But it's just a lovely book. Um, very sort of light and frothy. So that's The Hobbit. Um, so this is coming towards the end of the first row. Uh, we're still on H's. Matt Haig's The Humans. Um, I read uh, four, I think, books by Matt Haig now. And I recently found... Um, uh, how to Stop Time, I think it's called, uh, really cheap, which is cool. And I've got them in like library to read. I haven't read that yet. But I've read a few of his others. But this book is definitely, so far, what I consider to be his masterpiece. I think it's just brilliant uh, from cover to cover. It's, it's, it keeps surprising you as well. And the last few chapters is so brilliant and so uh, deep. It, it kind of makes you think. And, uh, you know, there's one, there's one section, if anyone that's read the book will know what I mean, there's three pages of advice in there it's about three pages and it's just so brilliant um and you can tell that he has got a very serious interest in mental health because that's a bit of a theme in there um i think it's a theme in a lot of his books um but yeah it is a theme in here but it's funny it's a very funny book yeah fantastic absolutely fantastic the humans matt haig okay so moving on to hyperion dan simmons um so I don't know if I'll read the others, um, partly because this feel, even though it's got a funny ending, still feels complete to me, uh, which is a bit weird. Um, but I just felt I actually felt like the the ending suited the rest of the book because it's a quite an unusual book anyway. It's quite an unusual structure and unusual kind of setup, narrative setup. So for it to end in a way that you wouldn't expect it to, kind of fitted it I thought yeah uh, a classic for the right reasons Hyperion uh, like I said one of the things I was planning to do was uh, I Am Legend and uh, you know I just love this book so much it's definitely in my top three books of all time uh, so um, yeah I just can't, I, I read it again recently because I wanted to do a video on it I've read it, I don't know, about four times. Um, I love it so much. Again, it's another one where, for some reason, they haven't made a film that's actually like the book. I don't really know why they haven't done that. Um, the films... I get why people might want to make a few changes, like when Peter Jackson did The Lord of the Rings. Um, he made some, some really good decisions on what he was going to leave out and what he was going to change. I get that. And sometimes that does happen, and it's really cool. Um, but I don't understand why someone would read this and go, yeah, that's all right, but let's do this instead kind of a bit odd um so anyway um i am legend definitely read it if you haven't read it uh, even if you've seen the films uh it's just be beautifully written richard matheson has got a great way of writing as well um he's a bit kind of hg wellsy i think in in his sort of sense of wonder when he writes as well so yeah richard matheson i am legend 
talking of H.G. Wells, the next thing in the alphabet, I Am Legend, is followed by The Island of Dr. Morrow. Um, so again, um, like I said with the last one, the um, the way it's written, they've got this real sense of wonder and sort of intrigue and mystery. The character, the main character, is kind of freaked out when he gets on the island and wants to know more about Dr. Morrow and what he's doing and these experiments he's doing. Uh, it's just a really cool story about, um, again, you know, should you be playing around with science? Uh, you know, that question of if you can do it, should you do it? I have got the time machine, but I didn't put it in this list. Uh, so anyway, uh, big H.G. Wells fan and Island of Dr. Morrow is amazing. He was worse than dead. Come on, Bones, what's the mystery? His brain is gone. Okay, next up is another Ursula Le Guin book. Uh, so this is The Left Hand of Darkness. Um, probably her most celebrated book. Uh, you could say it was her most famous book. Um, it's the one that really kind of the first book, I think, to really uh, um, put its mark on uh, discussing gender in science fiction. Um, and it's about these genderless, this genderless species. But again, Ursula Le Guin, she always makes you think. Uh, and whereas the last one was, like I mentioned, was that a political one, this is definitely much more of a sort of sociological discussion on gender. But yeah, it's classic for all the right reasons. This one is Logan's Run. So um, William Nolan uh, wrote the book with George Clayton Johnson, who's another Twilight Zone uh, writer, same as Richard Matheson and uh, Ray Bradbury and all that. Um, and uh, I, I think you could probably see a Twilight Zone thread running through a lot of this. But anyway, Logan's Run. Um, I put this in here because I do love this book, um, despite the fact that I really love the film. It's not about the fact that, oh, it's a film adaptation, you know, like a, a novelization of the film. It's not. The book came first, so it is different. And there are, there are some really uh, clear dramatic differences as well and the way it ends is very different um, but it's really well written it's brilliant I love it I love everything about it I love everything about the film as well but this is just really really cool uh, and definitely worth seeking out and it's definitely worth reading so this is the controversial bit I'm putting this down as one book so this is The First Ship of the Ring The Two Towers and The Return of the King I couldn't really pick one although I mean, we could argue the two towers might be the most, the easiest to read. I think the first ship of the ring, I like them more when I first read it. But I don't know. It's hard to take them. To, it's hard to pull them apart, really. But what the reason why I'm justified really in doing this is that when Tolkien wrote them, he wrote them as one book. But because of the paper shortage at the time, after the war he had to release them as three separate books so uh, you could argue that it's one book you could say it's Lord of the Rings but clearly you normally find them as three different books but yeah obviously we all know it's a work of genius The Martian you can't fault this book um, I, uh, I've only just recently read this but I'm still including it on this all time list because I just think it was unbelievable uh, so again, I had seen the film and I was worried. I tried to leave a gap be, um, so that I, it would, the film wouldn't be in my head. But the film was still in my head because it's such a classic and such a great film. So it was still in my head but it didn't spoil it because the personality in the narrative, because it's all first person. Um, the, the logs from Mark Watney, the main character, are first person. Um, so there are some times when it deviates when it's the other characters. But... Uh, yeah, the, the the narrative voice in the logs makes you forget about the film a bit because it's it absolutely engrosses you in the book version of Mark Watney and what he's going through uh, and the humour in the book. I mean, it's a very funny book and that's something that um, I don't think the film captured very uh, as well from what I remember. Um, but it's it's genuinely you know made me uh, sort of smile sometimes, made me laugh out loud a few times. Um, but it's so thrilling and it's so exciting. And I got goosebumps a lot of the time when I was reading it. Beautifully written book, uh, The Martian. 
this is a book that I literally love so much that if I find it, I'll buy it. I mean, I tend to find it quite cheap because it's not been reprinted for a long time. Uh, but Robert Sheckley, Mind Swap. Uh, it's really funny. It's very stupid. It's a, it's a society where people can um, go on holiday by swapping their bodies. Uh, and someone does... So, it's, so this main character thinks, yeah, I need a break. Work's been hard. I'm going to do this mind swap thing. And then he accidentally mind swaps with someone who runs off with his body who's on the run as a criminal. <laughs> and he's got to find his body again. Anyway, mind swap. Completely different is Misery. Annie Wilkes is a um, horrific villain. And uh, you absolutely feel for Paul, I think his name is, the main character... And his situation he's in. And it's just, you know, classic Stephen King. Um, okay, so this is the Terry Pratchett book uh, that... The first of the Terry Pratchett books, two Terry Pratchett books. Mort, uh, the fourth book in the Discworld series. Uh, the first one uh, to focus on death. And he's the best character, I think. And his... Uh, his books tend to be my favourite ones. I've read, I don't know, I think about eight Discworld novels, I think. Um, so I've still got a way to go. Um, but definitely those seem to be my favourite ones. Uh, so Mort is just brilliant. So yeah, definitely recommend that. Back on Stephen King for Needful Things. Uh, so this book is a big one. And as a big one, uh, you do get to know uh, a whole range of characters there's loads of characters in it and you get to know them very well because of the way King writes um, but it's, it's I love this kind of story uh, a very Twilight Zone a shop is set up where a man says that he can give you what you need and exactly what they want is in the shop but there's a price um, that everyone has to pay and it becomes absolute chaos by the end of the book because of what this character um, is has created through these favours so yeah Needful Things is just a phenomenal book that I really loved so Stephen King Needful Things again just like Frankenstein and Alice in Wonderland couldn't do a, um, a, a list of 50 all time favourites uh, from the science fiction fantasy horror area without the greatest dystopia ever written 1984 obviously a massive part of our culture we all have all sorts of um, ideas that come from that but the idea of big brother the idea of surveillance everywhere the idea of the government lying to you and um, you know deliberately sort of as a system um, and that idea of perpetual war um, the the uh, the double speak is a really interesting thing, isn't it? Because uh, the media um, have got all sorts of different words that make things sound nicer, like friendly fire and all that kind of stuff. Um, and double speak is a big part of the book, isn't it? Where his job, uh, Winston's job, is to translate, um, you know, make create new words so that ultimately, so that the, the population can be duped more. Um, and there's just so many ideas in this book and it's such an important book um, that it just goes well beyond just an idea of dystopia. It's, uh, it's just so much more than that. So, yeah, uh, essential reading, basically, 1984. Northern Lights. Um, I love this book and, weirdly, I haven't read the other two yet and I read this years ago. Um, so I don't know why I haven't read the other two because I really do love this but I need to I do own the other two so I will get around to that at some point but it's a brilliant book uh, and uh, so again so many great ideas in it um, but uh, clearly a really likeable character in Lyra as well so yeah I need to read the other two but Northern Lights um, is awesome there's not, even though I've read quite a few of his stuff, there's not a lot of Neil Gaiman in this list. Um, so I think there's only, this is the only one. Yeah, this is the only one. The Ocean at the End of the Lane, uh, which uh, was a beautiful book. 
Um, I would have included Coraline, but I couldn't find my copy of it. I know I've got it, but I couldn't find it. So anyway, didn't include Coraline. Um, but uh, The Ocean at the End of the Lane is a lovely book that I definitely recommend. It's one of his most recent ones as well, which is interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, he's obviously a great writer. Um, and uh, this is a really good one. It's a quite a sort of fluffy one in some ways. He's he's kind of soft on the dark side of stuff, even when he is dark. But he does these lovely stories. So yeah, the ocean at the end of the lane. Um, Old Man's War. Yes, get, it does get talked about a lot, but I think it's justified. Again, I couldn't find my copy of the Forever War by Joe Haldeman, and I think this is quite similar. Um, which John Scalzi does sometimes. You can see the influence on also some of the books he's written. Um, but I do think this is brilliant. Uh, and um, I want to get through the series. I've now got the second book. But it's about the consequences of time dilation as well. Um, which is a really awesome idea. So, yeah, not massively into the military SF. But uh, this is written with a lot of heart. And, uh, you know, it keeps you going through the whole thing. It's just I think it's just got a really nice easy way of writing um, which keeps you gripped so old man's war okay now i've got uh, the second terry pratchett one and it's another one concerning death reaper man um, i haven't read all the death ones um, but like i said i've read some other disc world books and these ones are my favorite ones uh, so reaper man um, is another awesome one but i just recommend disc world in general i think they're they're brilliant books so uh, I'm sure you hear them getting recommended a lot, um, but yeah, they're awesome books. Terry Pratchett was a good man. Okay, <clears throat> so this is Blake Crouch again. This was the book he wrote after Dark Matter, um, and I bought it expecting it to be good, but I th thought Dark Matter was such a special thing. I just thought, well, clearly that's going to be one of those greats where he won't be able to write anything quite as good. And this is really good, honestly. It's, it's, it's just such... It's, clearly on a bit of a roll uh, and uh, this is just a great this is another this is kind of a time travel thing um, but uh, and it starts off with a mystery about memories and it sort of goes on from that um, but it's just this fantastic book and it again keeps you guessing keeps you gripped uh, the plot moves along really nicely and there's some surprises in there the characters are really well drawn out it's just a brilliant book. So yeah, once you if read Dark Matter first anyway, as soon as you've watched this video, go and read Dark Matter. But yeah, seek this one out as well, Recursion. And this is the other John Scalzi one, Red Shirts. So this is a comedy, like I've got, I said I had a few comedies in there. I already had Hitchhikers in there and there's a few others coming up. Um, and this is kind of like a bit of a parody on the whole sort of Star, Star Trek red shirt thing where if they went on a away mission the red shirts wouldn't come back and that is the conceit at the centre of this and it kind of goes on from there and the security guys on the ship don't want to go on away missions and it's just you know it's, it, it goes beyond that and then they and and, uh, and I won't spoil it by telling you how it goes beyond that but it gets quite meta uh, halfway through and by the end of it and uh, he really plays with the concept really well so yeah really really good book um, and a bit of a sort of great idea to think I'm going to use this and get a book out of it so yeah John Scalzi very cool so this is another Stephen King book The Shining uh, again you'll probably be familiar with the film but this is so much better than the film I do love the film but it's quite different um, and I think they're separate things, you know, again, it's another case where people make a film that's so different to the book because the characters are so different in this book than they are in the film. Uh, Wendy's just like a helpless kind of uh, weak woman who screams a lot in the, in the film. And in this, she's so much more sympathetic and so much more intelligent, so much more mature, so much more connected to Jack. Um, and Jack and Danny are so much more connected and Danny is so much more connected to everything that's happening it's just such a different book I mean it's, it's just such a completely different thing that deserves to be um, what is apparently my top four Stephen King books so The Shining this is a special one uh, I haven't got my well 
I couldn't find my original copy of this, but I recently bought it again, so it was a nice sort of uh, new copy. Uh, Ray Bradbury, Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is your kind of classic story of a circus that comes to town, but it's an evil circus. Uh, yeah, Ray Bradbury. I'd like, I wanted to have one of his short story collections in this, but I couldn't decide which one. Um, I'm going to do a thing on short stories soon anyway. But yeah, he's just an absolute giant in fiction, especially um, sort of science fiction slash horror, um, fantasy fiction, absolute giant. So if you see anything from Ray Bradbury, it's worth reading. Um, and obviously the really famous dystopian book is Fahrenheit 451. But this is in there because I love this more. Uh, something Wicked This Way Comes. Amazing. Okay, so I've screwed about with the alphabet a bit. So this is before The Shining, really. The Sheriff of Yornamir. So this is by Michael Rubens, um, who's uh, he used to write on The Daily Show, I think. Um, so, And he hasn't written a lot of stuff, but I love this, absolutely love this. It's a comedy book. Um, it's relatively short, uh, but it had me laughing through the whole thing. Uh, I love this kind of sci-fi comedy as well. So it's it's uh, it's a bit more um, character based than something like Hitchhikers and Robert Sheckley, which is more farcical kind of uh, plot based comedy. Uh, whereas this is definitely about the characters, but but it's just you know, it's just really funny. It's brilliant, and I love it so much. It's really underrated. So yeah, if you fancy having a laugh, then look up Sheriff of Yornamir by Michael Rubens. It is really, 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 really funny. Okay, so a book that goes right back to my childhood, and this is mostly in the list because of its influence on me wanting to read a lot, and that's The Stainless Steel Rat by Harry Harrison. So, and I love that. I mean, it's weird because I think that cover it just takes me back, and it's just that period when I just discovered how much I loved reading good books um very light-hearted uh sort of uh criminal that turns good kind of story um and again a bit farcical some of it's the, the scrapes he gets into and how he gets out of them um but yeah uh brilliant absolutely brilliant uh and i've just put this one behind it the fifth book saying it's for president that was the first book i ever read in a day so usually i take a while to read books when i was a teenager but this one, I'll never forget not putting it down for the whole day and just being absolutely gripped and walking around my my mum's my house with it. So, yeah, Stainless Steel Rat, Harry Harrison. OK, this is the other Alfred Bester one. So, like I said, this gets uh, talked about a lot. And Alfred Bester gets talked about a lot. And he's a huge influence. Um, and I read this one relatively recently. But it's in the list because, again, just like The Martian, completely blew me away. You can't fault it. I think it's uh, just a... Uh, actually, I, I say that. Um, there is a, a very odd... I say you can't fault it. There is an odd kind of relationship thing in the book that doesn't really work. But it's also about a paragraph in the book. So, um, so much of it is so brilliant. There's so many ideas in this book. Um, I love the kind of the, the sort of thrilling nature of that demolished man, the other best of book, but this one is full of loads of really interesting ideas that uh, uh, bounce off quite an in, quite a basic revenge plot. The stars my destination. If you want to look at classic science fiction that doesn't hasn't really aged and it's got it's got tons of uh, interesting ideas in it, that's a great book. So this this book, The Stars Now Unclaimed by Drew Williams, I'm including this because I really did love this and I've read the other two in the series. It was a trilogy. Uh, the last one came out quite recently um, and all three books I really like. This one, just seemed, it just came out of the blue. Um, I saw it on the shelf, read the back. I thought, that looks interesting. I'll get that. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's quite straightforward. It's a, like an adventure thing. But essentially, this is about uh, three characters um, and um, those three characters are brilliantly drawn out you like all three of them for different reasons and they kind of go off on this sort of but two of them basically pick up the third one 
and they're, and they're kind of on the run. And it's kind of like an adventure thing from that point of view. But I just loved it. It's really, really good fun to read. And, I just, and I, you know, it's not always about being really deep and writing Frankenstein every five minutes. It's about fun sometimes. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a really lovely book. So Station Eleven, a little less fun. Um, this is a post-apocalyptic one. Um, it's again quite unusual in the sense that it uh, it is based around a theatrical troupe um, and what happens to them, but it does have some serious kind of bleak elements to it as well, and some of the things that happen to them. And it's and it's got a really good um, device of having the past being explained at the same time as you're getting to know the characters in the present day as well. And uh, yeah, it gets talked about a lot for all the right reasons. It's a brilliant book. So Station Eleven good post-apocalyptic book Ted Chang uh, you may have seen the previous video I've done about his two books Stories of Your Life and Others and Exhalation um, Exhalation I've lent that to a friend so I haven't got that on me I would have included it um, if I did but I don't but they're two incredible books I can't overstate how great these two books are so, Exhalation and the Stories of Your Life and Others. You may be familiar with the film Arrival, which was an adaptation of Stories of Your Life. But every story in this, in this collection and every story in Exhalation, the other collection, um, really make you think. They're just so brilliantly written and they're so deep. And it's about humanity, purpose, meaning, love. What does it mean to, uh, to be human? What does it mean to love? All those things are just explored through um, stories that are based around technology, interestingly enough. So he uses technology and kind of technological questions, technological inventions, to explore a problem or something, you know, a question about what does that mean for humanity. I couldn't recommend it enough. Anyone should be reading Tech Chang stuff. So yeah, go out and get this book and Exhalation as soon as you can. Okay, this is a funny one. I've, I've added this one um, because I wanted to include the Swords book from Fritz Lieber. I read them when I was younger and they had a massive impact on me. That was a big part of why I loved fantasy from these six books. And this is a, a kind of like a omnibus thing of the first three. So this obviously has them meeting up. in uh, That first story is called Ill Met in Lankmar, isn't it? Uh, Lankmar. Um, and... Uh, uh, yeah, I just love those stories. I love those characters, Faffel and Grey Mauser. So, yeah, if you don't know those stories, they're worth looking at. Amazing and a huge impact on me when I was little. Hooray! Okay, I've got three books left. This is uh, Touch by Claire North, the, the second Claire North book. Uh, easily one of my favourite all-time books. And it's, and it's just, I love it so much. Uh, and... Uh, it's not just the concepts fantastic like a, a, a being that can transfer to different um, bodies and take over their bodies for a while and until they decide to move on to another one and while that body is being occupied um, they're kind of in stasis if you like but they do remember everything that happens to them while this beings inside them um, and basically this being that's going from different bodies and body different bodies is being hunted uh, and at first you don't know why and then the plot develops and yeah all sorts of things happen um, but she's such a good writer that it's not just about that because when she is occupying a body then there's all sorts of other things that is in the text that make it really interesting and she's exploring smells and taste and the person's memories and you know, at one point she can tell that someone's seriously ill from being in their body for really quickly, and then before they move on, move on, move on. Uh, there's that knowledge that that person's going to be seriously ill. Uh, it's just, it's just brilliant. Uh, the the way that uh, the plot moves as well. It's really fast paced. The first few pages are like, whoa, okay, we're we're um we're on a roll already, kind of thing. Uh, and it doesn't really let up. Um, there's no there's no moment of um, respite really uh, so yeah such a brilliant book uh, it's kind of a thriller with a really interesting uh, narrative conceit in the middle of it so yeah touch love it 
Okay, so finishing off with two books. Um, this one's another comedy. We'll save the galaxy for food. I mean, that title tells you the tone of the book, really. Um, Yati Crosshaw is a good writer. I've read a few of his books, and I've got another one on my pile over there that I need to read. But yeah, um, I do like the way he writes, but this one in particular, I absolutely loved it, and definitely going to read it again soon. It made me laugh. Sort of um, bumbling rogue type idiot um, with uh, a sort of smart ass next to him, and he's just, you know, getting into ridiculous scrapes. Brilliant. Um, so there's that one. And then one last one, ending on a serious one, and ending on the great Ursula Le Guin, and that's The Word for World is Forest, which is her kind of ecological, um, what are we doing to the planet kind of book that clearly, as it's science fiction and what she does with her Hainish um, cycle, it's set on these worlds that she created over a series of lots of books. It's very short, and it was the first book I read by her, um, and it, you know immediately I thought she's awesome, and uh, she really is. So uh, yeah, the word for world is forest. Um, check that one out if you haven't read it. So that's fifty books, and if it's not fifty books, it might be forty nine because what I wanted to do was put up the cover of Flowers for Algernon um, because by Daniel Keyes because that is very very obviously in my top three books of all time i love it so much but i couldn't find my copy uh so i know i still have it somewhere but i couldn't find it so i couldn't do that holding up the book thing uh but flowers for Algernon is definitely uh a massive one for me so uh yeah that was quite a big that's quite a long video so you might not even get here uh, if you are here then uh, wow uh thanks for listening um but yeah buy all 50 of those books because they're brilliant Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more stuff, then please subscribe. Um, please like the video if you've liked it. Uh, share it if you have people you can share it with. And uh, thanks a lot. And I'll see you soon for more of this.